Well, now, I earn 95000 at the end of the month. It is a clean pay. It's a net salary. It's the money that I get at the end of the month into my bank account after deductions of the tax and the pay as you want and all any other taxes that are out there. All right. So basically telling you that my salary is above 100,000. Now, with this 95,000, this is where the big deal is. This is where we have the white elephant in the room is that at the end of the 14th month of every month, I'm always broke. I don't even know what to do. By the way, sometimes I go even without doing something. So I'm compelled. I'm, I'm actually contemplating letting going out there and getting a loan to fund some of the things and when i look i'm actually about to take a loan and fund the consumables now what exactly should i do please advise that is a description of a client who called me with the same same state and by the way with his consent he told me hey share this information out there so that at least it can help an individual or two if i'm wrong get me through three situations so that i understand where the problem is that is exactly the situation i'm going to talk to you today all right this is what's happening and i want us guys to go step by step and explain to you we're gonna use this example and get to see where you are you can actually use this example try to contemplate it or try to contextualize it into your life and see the mistake that this individual is making that you cannot get yourself into so that you do not get the problems that this individual is facing let's move step by step and get to see what the issue is and i know you are wondering okay can someone actually reach you yes people reach me clients do reach me if you would like me and you have a personal engagement about finance take you through about investments businesses and what have you you can always get my number my number is on the description of this specific video if you click more you'll get my number out there and you can give me a call we can have the engagement just, just for a cup of coffee's price, right? Let's get into the business. Now, the very first thing we have to look, this is a typical individual. And by the way, he is married, all right? Let's get to the point. Now, the very first thing, of course, you know in Kenya that really jiggers people's mind is about the rent. The guy is actually paying a rent of 20000 at the end of the month, all right? Am I making any judgment out there? Well, obviously, we say that you are not supposed to pay over 30% of your total income towards your rent. What does it mean? What is the 30% of 95,000? If 10% of 95,000 is 9,000, so around 17,000, so above that. So it means that this guy is at least within the range of 30 thousand so that is not a big deal it's okay it's quite amazing but some of the question would need to be asked at this particular point does this, this guy have a family must he live where he's living as of now how old is this individual and by the way according to the video and of course according to the client the the, the the age of this individual is 33 years all right so because there are reasons why you have to consider paying this amount of money towards your rent all right i mean if seriously you just the two of you the you and the wife why should you go for this amount of money for your rent? I think this particular time, you guys, you should focus on growing yourself. But anyway, no judgment first. First of all, let's dissect the story so that we understand where the problem is coming from. The other thing is about the home expenses, the food, the what have you, the, you know, uh, you know, nicing yourself and what have you. That all expenses, I was given the 99, 19,000 Kenyan shillings, all right? Are we together, guys? Now, after that, all the expenses, it means that here is buying about the food, the utilities, the electricity, the water, uh, you know, and all those kind of things, just to typically run a given typical day, all right? No judgment. Let's first of all get the budget, and then from there, we're going to dissect this issue step by step, and I explain to you where the mistake is. Now, here there, the issue start to come from. Now, the, he has a car loan of 22250 that he needs to pay at the end of any given month all right so the point is this well um i know you're asking is this car for business is this for personal use and something of sort what the heck is which kind of a car is this how much is the total cost of this car and for how long is he required to pay this amount of money all right now the question is this now that point then the second point the the fourth point brother the land loan this guy he has vision he has uh you know what we call uh, he has a vision of actually going out there and actually making some, uh, something called, you know, making a difference in his life. But now the question is this. He's actually paying this amount of money at the end of the month, all right, as, as his loan, all right? Now, the other thing, actually, I think it's 25000 here. I forgot it. It's 25000 if you can check it. Uh, it's 25000 No problem about that. Now, the point is this. Now, the other thing is about black tax. Black tax is, this, tax is this amount of money that you usually pay at the end of the month to make sure that at least you support your family members, maybe your parents, maybe your siblings, maybe your whatever. So the black tax, that's what we call it. And the last one, but not the least, 
he is not paying any school fees. So on the school fees aspect is 0.00. But he told me the wife is about to give birth. And obviously school fees will come maybe let's say in three years time. So the reason as to why he actually called is, hey, I'm worried. Right now, actually, we are just the two of us. I have 95,000 at my disposal. But at the 14th month or rather 14th day of the month, I have no money. I don't even know how I can survive. I don't even know the next step that I should take because where I am right now, it's actually going all the way overboard. Now, Joseph, help me. What should I do at this particular point? Now, the point, the question is this. Are this guy doing this amount of money and he's not even paying school fees and in three years time, he'll be paying school fees. This guy needs to up his game. And if you do the total of all that amount of money, guess how much it's adding up to be? It's adding up to be 95,250 around that amount of money. So the question is this, this guy has already exceeded, exceeded the amount that he's supposed to do what? To save out there. Or rather, this is, he has exceeded always at the amount of money that he's getting at the end of the month. So I asked him, according to the numbers that you're giving me, honestly, is going beyond that what you earn at the end of the month. Now, the question is this, how do you actually uh, get up for this amount of money? He tells, he tells me, hey, sometimes I can squeeze the black tax and pay, like, let's say, 7,000. I get myself 2,000, sometimes 3,000. Sometimes I feel like I can even do away with them. But anyway, when I focus back home, how I left the situation there is quite dicey, so I have to support out there. You see, about the car loan and the land loan that one i cannot negotiate with it the expenses that the areas where i can adjust and what have you anyway the point is this now today i want you to be the financial advisor here what's the problem with these numbers anyway the point is not the actuality and the total and what have you the point is this what's the problem with these numbers you see there's something you guys i would like to, to tell you because there's there some areas where you cannot adjust see for example the rent side here it's adjustable you can adjust this amount of money right this is adjustable because these guys are only two. And I believe this amount of money, that 20000 at the end of the month, this guy is actually picking a very high-end place. And let me tell you one thing. This is the problem of actually getting the money before getting the brain. And allow me to say it so, all right, in black and white. See, when you get the money and you do not have the wisdom to actually handle this amount of money, there's something that you're supposed to understand when you're young. And I understand you guys, you're reading it, this, this script from the point of, hey, life is short. You say you guys, you, you're calling it YOLO. You know, you only live once, yeah? That's what I heard you guys call it it yellow you know you only live once eh? now you say like hey guess what i have to get myself a best life and i know you're getting this salary but what if something happened what if another corona hits and you get fired what are the investments that you've made to, to, to cater for all these expenses now the point is this for me from where i sit honestly i think an adjustment should be made on the rent because this is quite an outrageous amount of money i mean these guys if you can just grab a one bedroom worth fifteen thousand at the end of the month i mean i believe it's quite an presentable place it may not be like a high-end place but i believe it's a quite a presentable place place but anyway let's assume they don't want to shift from the place all right now because anyway remember one thing these guys they have a car at the end of the month although it's a loan car of which you're going to discuss about it but now the problem is this they can just live somewhere where they can get a good price of money and i understand these guys what they are doing is that hey um they just want to have the life maybe they have never accessed this kind of kind of money they just want to enjoy themselves and what have you and the guy told me he is actually about to click one year into this job all right now, the home expenses. At this particular home expenses, this is quite a dicey state. What you're supposed to understand, and I did ask, where is this all this 19,000? I told him, hey, explain to me how much goes for the food. And he said, mm, I'm not really sure. Whenever somebody answers me in that way, I'm not really sure. I know that you do not do the budgeting. You cannot even tell exactly how much you consume at the end of the month. So the point is this, you really need to understand exactly how much goes for the food. Out of these expenses that you're giving it in generally, how much goes for the food and how do you usually shop for your food do you get the money go to the shopping you do the shopping in bulk you put that money or rather put all those things in your house and again how much goes for the electricity how much goes for your water and what have you so the moment you dissect these numbers you understand the specificities of allocations then therefore you can be able to actually look around and see hey where are my money going because anyway guess what i'm not saying people that should not live a comfortable life you should live a comfortable life but there's some of the things that we do have in our homes are not quite necessary by the way i visited a certain guy uh, you know to his home by the way i do offer a family package you know financial consultations i got invited to the place and this guy was living in a quite uh, you know a very hot area and he was having a what do you call a heat or something of sort he was he was telling me there was a, sometimes in our month this show so cold and water you know so some of the things that we usually have in our house are not quite so necessary 
And I'm not saying that people, sh you should have them, but the point is this, they are not so quite necessary. You can have somebody who has a fridge, you know, that fridge that guy puts in githeri or maybe put some, a very small amount of portion of food out there, but the amount of money that fridge that is breaking in, that meaning that not really breaking in, but actually using in terms of electricity compared to what you could have saved if you were to buy that thing each and every time you need it. You see, those are just but simple numbers that you do so that at least you can cut on the expenses. All right. I under understand these are two lover birds who would love to live in a quite a amazing and good life and what have you. There's nothing amazing. I mean, there's nothing bad with that. It is good. But the question is this. Now, the problem comes when you talk about the car loan and the land loan. There is a video I said that, hey, if there is something, there are two things that you're supposed to have them concurrently. There are things we call them the asset and there are things we call them the cash flow. You see, it is good to acquire an asset, but at the same time, it's not good to constrict or, you know, uh, what we call like uh, to, you know, uh, to press your cash flow. Because you really need to have the cash flow at the same time you need to have an asset. And there's nothing wrong with you acquiring a land. But the problem is this, how you acquire it, when you acquire it, that's where they withdraw the line. Because you can just imagine this, he's setting aside 25000 towards paying the land. And he's setting aside 2250 towards actually clearing that specific car that he's having. You can just imagine. So this guy, this is kind of sort of a paradox or something because this guy is actually basically anyway, let's assume that he goes on and holds. By the way, for the advice, I say it's a quite an amazing thing. It's okay. The guy can go ahead and acquire the land. I do not have the problem with that. Where I have the problem where I'm drawing the line is this. This car loan is buying it or rather he's servicing it at 22,000 at the end of the month. You see, the amount of money he is investing it's almost close to that amount of money that he's quote-unquote wasting. is quote-unquote that amount of money he's actually going there. Because this is an asset, this is a liability. So this liability is almost to a point whereby it's actually cancelling the effect of this uh, specific asset. And guess what? This asset is about services for the next three years. There is nothing wrong with that. Uh, that's amazing because if you do not have that purchasing power. But you see, what I was telling him, hey, if you made a call before actually going getting into this, I would have advised you to do this. Maybe you could have taken a whole year accumulate the amount of money all right accumulate amount of money and do so maybe using a money market fund for example or maybe you can do so using a treasury bill or something of sort give yourself at least one year because this money of yours is actually earning interest to you all right and by the time you clock maybe 1.5 years, you can be able to withdraw that money. You can do what we call, even if you won't do the full purchase of that specific land, you can be able to do the half of it. So that the period of time that you service that loan, and obviously it means more interest. The longer you service of course, it means more interest. You could have actually cautioned yourself to that thing. But now you told me like you had only a few, very few number of coins. That's why I'm actually paying this amount of money. I did place it out there and I started servicing this loan. There is no problem with that. The point is this. If this guy could have actually first channeled the money towards somewhere where he's earning a, a good interest, maybe you can channel this amount of money towards a circle. You can imagine setting aside this 25000 towards a circle each and every month and give yourself at least two years. No, you not only qualify a loan, you can actually guarantee yourself but you, you can only actually guarantee yourself and acquire you a very big and a good asset out of it. You see, we always say it is good to put your mouth where your money is. The car loan, the landlord, I do not have any problem with it. Where I have a problem is where we are servicing this type of a car. And I ask this guy, does this car actually function as just for transport for yourself to, to your job back to your home, to your job back to your home? And he said, yes. You see, this car is not only taking money out of you, meaning you're paying that loan. Number two, it's as well consuming fuel, the maintenance and what have you. This car does not generate any income. And I know you're about to tell me, hey, he's arguing from the point of the transport cost and what have you. Where this guy works and where he lives is quite a short distance. I'm not saying that he walk, but anyway, he could have at least acquired a car that is quite uh, friendly in terms of how, how much he's paying at them. There are some cars that you can even pay 10,000, 12,000 at the end of the month. So at that particular point, you've saved yourself a whooping 12,000 at the end of it. So if you can do so, then you've saved yourself 12,000 around this area. If you actually used this pro uh, formula, uh, a better formula of acquiring, acquiring the land compared 
compared to this one you could have saved a little bit of it uh on the black, black tax this is whereby it may be very a little bit dicey to touch this area but again it's good also to sit them down and talk to them or see where you can be able to salvage some things on the expenses again you can salvage some things on the rent as well you can save. for me here i stand with fifteen thousand. you save five thousand uh, here you save twelve thousand we are talking of up to twenty thousand close to twenty thousand that is on the land the situation it is you cannot be able to do something about it because even if you terminate the contract it actually means loss to you probably uh -huh. the black tax again you can negotiate in this area or you can just decide to make it remain the same expenses as well so this guy is actually has the capability of salvaging close to twenty five thousand out of the budget that he gave me we went to the detail and actually shared the information out there all right and that is exactly what you get once you contact me when it comes to matters of the issue what we do is that we move step by step. We explain all the situation and exactly what you can be able to do and salvage yourself out of this kind of a nasty thing. Guess what? That marks the end of my video, but it's not the end of me posting a video each and every day. Guess what? You can always make sure that you don't miss any of my, any of my good videos. And how do you do that? Down below there on your right, there is a small button written subscribe. If you hit that magical button and as well, turn that notification bell, you get to be notified whenever I upload a new good video. For now, make sure a goodbye but don't forget here is a good joseph we talk about money we talk about investment for now it's a goodbye see ya